Hey YouTube. Um, I say this every time I make a video because I never make one, but um, it's been a long time. Um, we're on spring break here, so um, I wanted to give a quick update and this, the quality of the video is going to be bad because I'm on my webcam. Um, and I also wanted some advice from some of the people who hopefully still have me in their side uh, friends to see if maybe they'll watch this and uh, give me some advice. As most of you know, um, the last video I did, uh, my daughter was in it. Um, she's now 17 months old. Um, but for Martin Luther King weekend 2011, um, I fell uh, sick with what I thought was the flu. Um, I sent my daughter away for four days and got over it and went to the doctor and they said everything was fine, picked her up, um, and about once every six to eight weeks I would have these little episodes where I felt flu-like, um, weak legs, running a fever, things like that, but it would just go away and I never really thought too much of it until uh, it had been going on probably about five months and um, I dropped my daughter and so I said, well, I need to go to the doctor. And I went to the doctor and they diagnosed me with mono. Um, that went on for, the diagnosis of mono went on for probably a good five, six, seven months. Um, and finally my primary care said, you, uh, you've got to go see an infectious disease doctor because your mono levels have stayed the same and that's not normal. Now, the whole time I haven't been able to do anything with my band. Uh, mainly because when I went in, he said I had a tad bit of slippage and had, um, uh, reflux, which at the time that he said that I didn't feel the reflux. And so he wouldn't, he gave me like a fourth of a CC filler. I mean, not enough to, to do anything. Um, I think it was just enough to, um, shut me up for the time being. And I was really discouraged, and I said, uh, that's it, I'm not going to do anything else, you know, with it. Um, I'm going to do it on my own, which is, if you're looking at me, you can tell I haven't done. So, um, I w went back to the infectious disease doctor. Um, they did blood work after blood work after blood work. They did um, chest x-rays, ultrasounds, all this stuff, because... It started getting more frequent that I was having these fevers, um, weak muscles, painful muscles in my legs, uh, just really couldn't function. They only last about a half a day, and then they usually go away. Um, I've told all the doctors that I've gone to that I have lap band. Everybody has said uh, no, they didn't feel like it was related because... I'd had it since 2008, and, you know, uh, they just didn't think it was related. So, my infectious disease doctor sent me to a hematologist because on the ultrasound, on the CT scan, um, with IV infusion, it showed that my spleen was enlarged. So, I go to the hematologist um, in town, um, and the hematologist says, that they want to do a bone marrow test um, and the more he talked the more he talked he said you know I just really feel like you need in a second opinion um, we're gonna refer you to Emory Hospital in Atlanta um, to the hematology department there and see what they have to say <clears throat> so we go there now keep in mind most of you guys know I've divorced so the insurance that I had for the light band um, before I don't have any more because that was with my first husband. Um, my husband now, we don't have any bariatric coverage on our insurance at all. Uh, so anytime I would go see my bariatric doctor, I would have to pay out of pocket. It was $125. Um, which got costly. But the, uh, the other doctors, I mean, they were covered, you know whatever 80 20 or whatever but I'm still floating in some pretty hefty medical bills right now 
Um, so we go to the hematology department in, at Emory, and she talks to us and kind of gives us what it could be. Um, could be chronic mono, which I was told here if it was chronic mono, there's no cure, there's no treatment for it, that you just have to kind of live with it, and eventually it'll go away. Well, we found out that's not true, but the treatment that they have for chronic mono um, is not for everybody because it's kind of like a form of injectable chemotherapy. But she said that she needed to test the DNA of my blood to make sure that I even had mono, um, and then that would explain a lot of the that would explain all the fevers and body aches and yada yada yada. So we did a big blood workup which I drove all that way to have more blood drawn, and nothing. Blood came back fine. White blood cell count's fine. Red blood cell count's fine. Everything's fine. Um, everything is within normal limits. Sometimes they take my blood, I'm anemic. Sometimes they take my blood, I'm not. Uh, so my question to her was, could it be my lap band? And she said no. Um, she didn't think it was my lap band. It's the same thing every doctor has said. They do not think it's my lap band. Um, and I said, okay. So, the next step for her was to do a PET scan. Which, if anybody's had a PET scan, it's a full body scan. They inject um, a radioactive glucose into your veins. And they look for hot spots such as cancer and things like that. So, but it's a very expensive test, and again, I don't have the best insurance, and, but we felt like, you know, it, it's a full body scan. It's going to show us something. It showed nothing. It showed that everything was normal. In the meantime, I'm still having these episodes at least once a week, if not twice a week, which is so much more frequent than a year ago. So... My grand, I was talking to my grandmother, and um, I was born and raised Catholic, and my grandmother is a devout Catholic, and she prays the rosary at least once a day. And um, she says to me, the Holy Spirit came and spoke to me and said, it's your light band. Which, you know, my lo here's my logic of the light band. Well, this is what I was thinking. I'm sorry, guys. My phone is just going crazy. Um... It is a foreign object in my body, but when I talked to the doctors at Emory, who are not bariatric doctors, I understand, they said that they saw no slippage and they saw no erosion. Those were my main concerns. And we know that there's not an infection at my port site because we don't, I mean, I, I guess we know. We don't see anything. There's no rash or, I had a friend who had the light band and she had to have it removed because she got an infection at her port site. But when I talked to her about it, she said it was almost like she had a hernia up underneath it. She had a rash on top of it. She was very obvious something was wrong. And I'm, I'm not having any of that. Um, I've looked up the symptoms of erosion and slippage. And, you know, what's weird about whatever I have going on is I can pretty much relate it to whatever. I don't have all the, I don't have most of the symptoms of erosion. I don't have most of the symptoms of slippage. Do I have a few? Of course I do. Um... I have a lot of, of reflux now, which we know is band related, but a lot of people have reflux with the band, right? But I'm not doing, you know, here's the thing, I'm not doing anything with the band right now, so I don't really care if I have it or if it goes. I know I need to lose weight, um, but I'm not doing anything with the band. My concern is the cost of going and seeing him and having the test ran, and because none of it's covered. I even called the insurance company and asked them about it. So, after speaking to my grandmother, she is determined that it's my band. She said the Holy Spirit has spoke to her and said it was my band. And I'll take that as you will. But, logically thinking, and after speaking to my husband, I have a foreign object inside of my body. Um, there is no medical explanation why I have the body aches and the fevers. But... I do have a documented case of body aches and fevers. I mean, you can't you can't fake a fever. You know, I go in with 102 fevers, and I sweat like profusely. And the doctors think, "Oh, your fever's breaking," and they check my temperature, and it's still rising. So there's no real explanation for what's going on. So I've done some research. 
Um, I think the next step is to have the band removed. My question to you guys is, has anybody had it removed where insurance didn't cover it? And how much did it cost? Um, the friend that I had, uh, have I've had actually a couple friends who've had the band. I've had two friends who've had them removed. Um, the one friend who had the infection at a port site and had it removed, uh, insurance covered hers and she did not have a revision surgery, but she lives in Texas. Um, the friend who is local who had the band removed um, had the same insurance that I had when I had the band put in. And her, we both have the same surgeon. Her, the insurance company covered the removal, but would not cover a revision. But because the band, whatever her problem was, it was just a lot of reflux and stuff. The doctor charged for the band removal, but since he was already in there, he did the sleeve. If that makes sense, I don't know. She just told me that she had to pick up a thousand dollar. She had to pay a thousand dollars for a supplemental insurance in case something happened while she was having the sleeve, but that he did, he basically charged for band removal, but did the sleeve for free. So she didn't know how much it cost. So my question is the cost, and has anybody gone through this? Um, like I said, this has been going on, it was a year, um, January of this year, so it's been like, what, a year and two and a half months or something. Um, way too long because I cannot take care of my daughter when I'm having an episode and they're coming a lot more frequently now so um, I guess this will be a new journey that hopefully um, I'll find time to blog about because I'm just really tired and I don't know what's going on and any kind of help you guys can give me would be wonderful any advice if you've had the band removed and had to pay for it, how much did it cost where you are? Uh, what have you done since then? You know, are you still losing the weight uh, without the band? Uh, most of you guys know I have PCOS, which is not an excuse, but it does make it a little bit harder to lose weight. And I was successful with the band. Um, I lost about 100 pounds with it. Um, I'm back up. I need to lose about 30 pounds to get where I was pre-pregnancy weight. Um, but about... 50 pounds to get where I was at my lowest with the band. So I've had some significant regain. Um, and I don't think it's all baby. It's, it's a lot of me. So anyways, thanks for watching guys and, um, talk to you soon.